This is one of the bigger setbacks in a while. These happen from time to time, but it's never fun when you have invested a lot of time into bringing something new to the market and then... Um, but this is part of the job. Some jobs you'd get, some jobs you don't get. But now, let's get into the video, because I have a lot of really cool After Effects plugins that I want to show you. All right, welcome to After Effects. Let's start off with opening a project. Uh, let's just do an old one right here. Now, the best plugin I've ever installed in After Effects is actually a super boring one. It's called FX Console by Video Copilot, and this is all it does. It does do more of this, but this is all I use it for. You select clip you want to add an effect to, and then you press your shortcut, and then you just, let's do warp stabilizer, you know? whatever you want to do. You start typing and you get the effect. You can also do some other things like uh, take screenshots, open up a gallery, export things, but it just makes life so much better in After Effects. Now, before we continue to the next slide, I just want to real quickly show you this. Tracking in Photoshop's generative fill basically makes you able to do super good content aware fill in After Effects. Of course, you're limited to the shots, but I mean, Look, it looks so good. Moving on. All right, here we go. A bit more complex project. Uh, so, the second plugin I want to talk to you guys about is Real Smart Motion Blur, or RSMB for short. And this is this was the pinnacle of montage editing back in the days. If you didn't use RSMB, you were a noob. Basically, all it does, this one too, quite simple, quite boring. It adds motion blur. That's it. It's really, really good at what it's doing. Like, look at this clip. If we were to add this to a normal video, because of the fact that we have always locked our shadow to either 180 or 360 degrees, all the effects we do manually, they look out of place. But if you add motion blur, everything just looks, it just ties everything together, makes everything feel like it belongs together and it doesn't feel out of place. It's quite fast to use and it's a lot better looking than After Effects' own motion blur effects. Moving on. Now this next plugin is called Magic Blur Lux and I actually had my start with this plugin too in the montage editing community and now I'm basically using it to spice up, add that final 5% to our videos basically. And I'm quickly gonna jump over into Premiere right now because I actually use it more in Premiere. You still can use it in After Effects but I personally use it in Premiere a bunch. This is basically the creme de la creme of skin tones and basically you bring it up that final oomph that makes it look really professional. Of course you have to start from a good base but after that like you can add some effects. I usually use a bit of softness, maybe a vignette and then some clarity to basically pop the image and then some humanity to bring out some reds and halation because yeah just I don't know I just like the look and the vibe. I also quickly want to mention the, the rest of the Magic Bullet suite because these tools are all really really good. I've had some really challenging footage saved with uh, Cosmo right here and they work so well and you know how some plugins you have to kind of fight against to get things working? These plugins basically work on your team and you can bring up that final oomph to your footage quite easily. You don't have to do a lot of manual work. They work well and they're quite fast to work with. Only downside is these plugins are very expensive. but. I think they're worth it. Moving on, this next plugin is called Depth Scanner and the first time I installed it was for Red Bull Flick where I was making a uh, tournament trailer. So I just wanted to basically spice things up and then after this I basically kept using it and it's good for quite a lot of things actually. So what it basically does is you can create a depth map. You can separate the foreground and background very easily. And this can actually, well, for this use case, I basically only used it to slice. So basically you can separate the subject from the background very easily. It's not perfect, you can see it's, it still has some edges here that are not great, but it's usually good enough. And for this shot in particular, well, you can tell this wasn't great because we shot with heavy backlight. Fortunately, there's a lot of dynamic range in the red cameras we use, so we basically brought it up. Now, if you push things too far, it will start showing off in the edges a bit too much. So basically, it's a one-click plugin for depth maps, and I use it to color grade footage, 
add more background blur if needed, or simply create something really cool in combination with pixel sorter or things like this to basically stylize footage. I really like it even though it's sometimes a little bit slow and tedious to work with, it's a great plugin. Now this final one is technical too and quite boring if I'm honest, but if you have a key now you might have spotted it already, it's called move anchor point and basically all it does you can center the anchor point, move it to the sides, either to the object or the selection or the composition and this is just so fast and convenient and if you're working with a lot of layers and you try to align things like we had this project, hold up one second. Now let's say you want to add a little bit of a zoom in to this whole composition. Uh, as you can see, things move around and it's not looking great. And basically with Move Anchor Point, all you need to do is make sure you have this set to composition. You center the keyframes and then if you add a scale up right, scale in right now. Still doesn't work. Oh yeah, because there, yeah, fine. All right, so you still would need to make the scale attributes similar to each other by masking. Which is fine, but yeah, now we should be golden. Yeah. So basically you can easily center or move your anchor points according to your needs. And yeah, it's just one of those things that makes life a lot easier when you don't have to do it manually for each clip. It gets right on the 0 0.0 pixel and it's really fast. And lives right here, next to a line for me. Because then you have it always visible and whenever you're animating text, doing things like this, yeah. You're good, you're good to go. And look, because we're at the end of the video, After Effects crashed, which also happens from time to time. Thank you for watching and I'll link everything down below. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you.